A common feature of the interface of Windows applications is the use of key mnemonics. Uh, key mnemonics allow a user to access menu items and objects on the interface, such as buttons, by using the Alt key along with combinations of other letters. And you see this in pretty much all Microsoft applications and other Windows applications. If you hold down the Alt key and look at the menu bar in the IDE, you'll notice that various letters on the menu bar are underlined, and that is the key mnemonic. So the View menu, for example, when I press the Alt key, the V is underlined. So if I press Alt V, that's going to open up the View menu. And I can then use the keyboard arrows to move up or down in that menu, or You'll notice the menu items, or you'll notice that many of the menu items also have letters that are underscored. And for example, if I wanted to bring up the tab order for my project, I could press the letter B. And there's the tab order. If I wanted to turn that off, I could do Alt B again and press the letter B. So we're going to look at how to set this up for our buttons as well as for our text fields so the user can navigate through our form without using the mouse. And this is pertinent for those who may have a disability or those who just prefer not to take the time to reach over and move the mouse and rather just use the keyboard. It's actually very, very simple to do. I'm going to start with the Submit button, and this works both in Visual Basic and C Sharp. I'm going to select the Submit button, and then in the text property, we have the caption of that button. And to make a letter the key mnemonic, all I need to do is put an ampersand, a Shift-7, in front of that letter. So I'm going to put an ampersand in front of the S of Submit. That will cause the Alt-S to be the key mnemonic, and it'll be the same as clicking on the Submit button. I'm going to do the same thing for the clear form. I'm going to put an ampersand in front of the C. And then for the exit button, commonly we use the X. So I'm putting an ampersand between the E and the X. So let's just test this and see how this works. So there's my form. If I press Alt S, it's the same as if I'd clicked on the button. If I'd clicked on that submit button and I get the dialog box that was coded for that button. If I do an Alt-C, that clears the form. And if I then do an Alt-X, that closes my application. So those all work. Now we can't set up key mnemonics for the text in the text box because those are dynamic. That text is changing. But what we can do is set it up for the labels in front of the text boxes. One of the keys is that in the tab order we should have the labels in front of the text boxes. So my enter student ID is tab 0, the student ID text box is 1. Enter first name is 2, the first name text box is 3. So they're in the order in front of the text box. What's going to happen we can set mnemonics on the text for the label since it's static, but a label can't get the focus, so it passes the focus to the next object. So in setting up a key mnemonic for a label, it's actually going to select the text in the text box as the next control. Let's try that. I'm going to turn off the tab order, and I'm going to select my label of interest student ID, and I'm going to set the I of ID as my key mnemonic. And then I'll do the same thing for enter first name. Let's do the F of first name. And then enter last name. I'll use the L. Now, one of the keys here is obviously you can only use each letter once. So you might want to keep track of which letters you've used. Okay, so I've set up the I, the F, and the L. Let's try this out. So I'm going to start debugging. And now, if I press Alt-F, it highlights the first name. If I press Alt-L, it highlights the last name. And if I press Alt-I, 
it highlights the student ID and I can replace that text by typing from the keyboard. I'm going to do an Alt X to exit. One other thing we can do as far as assisting the user uh, with the interface and using keyboard shortcuts is we can set up for the form an accept key and a cancel key. So we need to make sure the form is selected and then in the properties I'm going to scroll up to the A's and find the accept button. And right now it says none. What the accept button does, it's the button that will in essence be clicked when the user presses the enter key. And I would want to set that, in this case, to the Submit button to submit the contents of the form maybe to a database. And so I'm going to click this downward arrow and choose, here's the list of my buttons, I want BTN Submit. And then I'm going to scroll down a little bit further and find the Cancel button property for the form. Do the same thing. I'm going to look at the list, and I'm going to choose the BTN clear button which is my clear form button and this will be activated when the user presses the escape key. So let's try those. Again I'm going to debug my application and so I have some text now in the ID, first name, last name and if I just press the enter key that's the same as if I would clicked on the submit button and it gives me the dialog box that was coded for that button. If I press the escape key, we're going to see the, the form clear because it's the same as having clicked on the clear form button.